Long, long ago, in the village of Tosa, in southern Japan, a boy named Manjiro went fishing. He sailed off with four fishermen and had good luck finding fish. But suddenly they found themselves caught in a storm. They were being washed away from Japan by a current. The Tokugawa shogunate had closed Japan off from the rest of the world. No one was allowed in, and those who left were not allowed to return. The small boat was battered and torn, and the fishermen huddled together for days, wondering their fate. Then they saw something. It was but a tiny island of craggy rock cliffs, but it was hope of survival, so they swam to the island. They found a cave and somehow survived for months. One day, they saw something on the horizon. Was it their imagination? It came closer. It was a miracle, and Manjiro swam out to the boat. Soon they were taken aboard a big ship. The John Howland was a whaling ship from America. Suddenly they were filled with fear, but Captain Whitfield was so kind and took care of them. Manjiro was curious and learned English quickly. Soon he could communicate with the sailors from the faraway land. He also learned about whaling and navigation. Captain Whitfield took a liking to Manjiro, and he invited Manjiro to sail back to Fairhaven, Massachusetts with him. Knowing there was no chance of going home to Japan, Manjiro accepted and sailed off to America for the very first homestay. Fairhaven was a world Manjiro could not have imagined. He fared well there. He went to school and learned much about this new world. He even went off on another whaling journey. Still, he longed to go home to see his mother. One day, he heard the news about the California gold rush. From his whaling work, he'd earned enough to make his way to California. Eureka! Manjiro struck gold. With enough gold in his pockets, he began his journey back home to Japan. When he neared the coast of Japan, he launched the whaling boat he had purchased and rowed his way back to Japan. At first, he was taken into custody, but finally he was allowed to go home. And at long last, Manjiro saw his mother again. Before long, Manjiro was summoned by the Japanese government. They needed his language skills. Japan was meeting with Commodore Perry to negotiate the opening of Japan's seaports. Manjiro became a hero and was made a samurai. In 1860, he boarded the Kande Maru to return to America. As an official interpreter, Manjiro was part of the first ambassadorial mission to America. After their time in San Francisco, the delegation traveled to Washington, D.C. Then in 1870, Manjiro made his way back to Fairhaven and reunited with Captain Whitfield. This auspicious relationship has lived on for many generations and continues today as we celebrate the 150th anniversary of the arrival in San Francisco of the Kandin Maru and the Powhatan and to open the 20th America-Japan Grassroots Summit.